She's going to tell us when to go, right? <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear the dog, right? Just a, just a little. <laughs> uh, your teeth are so white i love it oh loud now <laughs> <laughs> good afternoon and good evening to some to the semester sc community and our friends thank you for joining the latest installment of wavelengths alumni series which is an online program highlighting talented semester at sea alumni around the world every other wednesday at 5 p.m mountain time Alums from different industries and career fields share their stories via the official Semester at Sea Facebook page. So welcome to all of you. My name is Myla Edmond. I had the privilege of sailing on Semester at Sea as a student in the spring of 1999 and as staff in the fall of 2011. I am thrilled today to have a conversation with my wonderful friend, Lisa Slavid. Surprisingly, Lisa and I did not sail on a voyage together. But through our alumni volunteer activities, um, we've become quite close and have been for over the last 13 years. So if you haven't had the pleasure, let me introduce you to Lisa. In addition to just being an all around lovely person, uh, Lisa is an organizational consultant. She's a keynote speaker. Uh, she's also an executive coach and a cartoonist. She's a semester SE trustee and has had over 25 years of experience working as a higher education professional. Lisa designs and facilitates programs on leadership, innovation, strategic planning, and she coined the term learned hopefulness in relation to expanding our collective sense of creativity and agency. So Lisa today is gonna to talk to us about what it means to live a life of wonder. And before we delve into our discussion, just wanted to give uh, you an opportunity, Lisa, to say a few words. Sure. Well, thank you for the awesome introduction, and thank you for um, for being for being here today, folks. We were setting this up a little bit so I could drop a couple stories out there and a little bit of theory, but that also would be more of a conversation between Myla and me because Myla is wonderful and wonder filled, and uh, and I just, I just want to give a shout out to her. We've been on a really great journey of supporting each other in life and in our own creative endeavors. Myla is a phenomenal writer. And so we'll, we'll have some conversation between the two of us as well and take some questions at the end. So welcome. Thank you, friend. And do you want to share when you sailed on semester at sea? Oh, yes, that. I sailed as a resident director starting in spring 98 and then dean of students in summer 07. Dean of students again in fall. 2012 and assistant executive dean aka the voice um the good people on that voyage will remember me as that and me calling them the good people on fall 17. perfect so do you want to start your presentation for us sure sure i'd love to yeah myla asked me before we all started um today too just so like when we were getting warmed up about like why wonder why workshop on living a life of wonder and this is something that's been coalescing. Um, I've been doing a lot on creativity to do creativity coaching, but I realized that um, wonder was sort of a frame of life for me. And it, I've had so many experiences of wonder on semester at sea voyages, but one of the things that I often get asked from people afterwards too, is that especially during re-entry is, gosh, how do we keep this alive? How do we keep the wonder alive? And I feel like, I think we do it by having a framework. We have a framework and within that framework, this is not a complete framework. I'll, I'll show you a slide in a little bit. Um, but within that framework is creativity and gratitude and mindfulness and presence. And to me, the wonder, every time I used that word, it just started um, resonating more with, with folks. So 
uh, I think I've been a fan of Wonder ever, you know, pre Wonder Woman, although um, she was a part of it and definitely my first crush. But uh, this sense of wonder and just looking at the world with the, um, oh, with humbleness and a little bit of awe and a little bit of surprise. Like if we slow down, we can kind of get lost in the blue of the sky or the way the clouds move across the sky. And so part of that is just slowing down a little bit. And so for folks right now who are joining us too, I think I'd like to start off, um, oh, we'd like folks to use the, uh, the comment sections too, but just if you could take a moment and breathe and arrive and maybe look around where you are at and open up your mind to that sense of wonder as a noun, and then also maybe a little bit of wonder as a verb in terms of curiosity. So I'd ask you to curiously look around wherever you're at and find something that is a little glimpse of wonder, reminds you of wonder wherever you're at. Just take a moment to do that. Molly, do you wanna share something that might resonate with you? Something that gives me wonder in, in this room. Yeah. So I have actually a really a nice view outside. And if, if I look past my immediate, what I can see in my immediate view and kind of see out to LA, and it, it gives me a sense of wonder to see like what exactly I'm, I'm looking at and to place myself. Um, and I'm always fascinated with placing myself. So yeah, I think when I look out yeah. of my window, I kind of get in awe. Yeah, thank you. Thank you yes, for sharing. Of course. It's a little bit like that I spy game when you, when you ask kids or adults on long car rides, like I spy with my little eye, something blue. And so part of what I want us to do is kind of build up this almost like a, a habit or a framework or like a muscle like let's exercise our wonder muscles as we move through life uh, and we kind of get into it into it that way so yeah um any other questions before maybe I, I jump into the little bit of theory go for the okay. theory okay cool so I you know one of the great things about semester at sea is that it's it's a learning um it's a learning institution I also think it's a meaning making institution. Um, and whenever I said with students too, over the years, I started to evolve a question of like, what's your curious question? What's your, what are you wondering about pre-voyage as you launch? What might be you looking for um, on your voyage? And just to kind of come up with or collect really curious questions to, to view your voyage. And I think that's true for us in, in our lives too. And with semester at C2, I just wanted to, I love dropping a little bit of theory into things. And I want, um, I want us to connect to a part of wonder, which is creativity. And I think a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not quite so creative. So I wanna walk us through that as part of the theory I'm about to share is just walking us through what that looks like. And we're gonna start our little slideshow lecture here. So here we go, wonder, it's a, a noun and a verb. So I'm activating um, hopefully your curiosity. And you know, we can, I'm not reading you the definition of wonder from the dictionary, but I think if you stop and think about maybe what it means to you, we'll connect you most to that as well. And, and for me, what wonder means to me is this little sense of things being um, incredible and connected. Like I have a wonderful friend in Mila and when I get to paint, like what comes out of that, I feel like is a wonderful sense of creation. Um, so just think about what wonder might mean for you. And then think too, as Myla and I ask each other questions, and I know that you might get a chance to drop some questions into comments too. Exercise wonder as, your, as a curiosity is collecting some good questions that maybe, um, maybe you get to ask yourselves. And we'll put some other questions out there for you to answer too. Okay. So this is what um, I drew in terms of a very loose framework. Um, and I do these arms sort of embracing things. Like I think wonder is a part of our lives that when we lean into it and we lean into connection as well and creativity that we get to hold um, a life of meaning. And this, I could go off on a tangent on thriving and really great theories about how we flourish um, in different stages of our lives. But, uh, and that's really great to look up. I'd look up positive psychology and I'd look up the PERMA, P-E-R-M-A theory, but I'm not gonna dive that deep into that today. But what I wanna do is add my own riff to this, which is about living a life of wonder. There are other sweet things that might nestle in here, like mindfulness. I think if we slow down to just think about how incredible it is that we're having 
a talk remotely through technology and people are joining in from all over the world and all different time zones and you get to see us live and in color. And so um, there's a mindfulness, just kind of wonder and awe in that. And then the connection. I think when we slow down to think about wonder, um, connection is nestled in there too. And in there too, for me about how, I, one of the ways I wanna help people live lives of wonder is connecting you all to, um, to your, your creativity. And then you get to make your own meaning from that. Like, I think it imbues our lives and our days with just, I think, awe and gratitude um, are good things to embrace. So in the spirit of embracing all of this, I'm going to walk you through a couple of slides just to, just to get you to embrace your own creativity. Because I think, uh, I think this is one of the keys, one of the gateways to helping ourselves live actually with a lot of agency and empowerment that also lets us connect wonder. So I'm going to ask, even though I can't all see you, who here is creative? Feel free to drop a comment in the, um, in the chat uh, if you want to do that and, and share how you're creative. But what I would share with you is that there's a lot of studies out in creativity right now. And when I talk to a lot of people, I will even get from the most wildly creative folks, oh, I'm not creative. Like I can't sing or paint. So first off, there's so many different ways to be creative and we'll get into that. But there's something that happens, at least um, in the U.S. I'm, I'm curious. I don't know. I don't know how this happens in other in other countries. But there's a gentleman, Gordon McKenzie, who wrote a really good book called Orbiting the Giant Hairball, which talks about creativity. And he goes and talks to schools. And one of the things he noticed is that um, when he talked to kindergartners and he asked kindergartners who here is creative, what do you think the kindergartners did? Kindergartners, everybody's creative. They are everybody. their hand. Yeah, yeah, they're all like, oh, me, oh, me, oh, me, Mrs. Slavitt, Mrs. Slavitt, I'm creative. Here, let me show you. I can do a handstand. They're all into it. And then when we ask folks, like, when he would go and ask folks uh, in the third and fourth grade who here is creative, what do you think happens? I would say fewer hands went up. Yeah, about half. And then you get into sixth or seventh grade and a couple a couple or one or or I might point to Mila and be like Mila's creative but Mila's like just sitting quietly because no one else is raised like so there's just this tamping down and so I don't I don't want to like deconstruct that right now but what I do want to do is rebuild this up and just make sure that like if, if one of the wishes of this workshop is besides leaving maybe with a, a sense of framework of wonder for your own life and your own journey is the sense of you being a kindergartner type with like, yeah, I'm creative, totally. And so let's walk through that a little bit more. We're going to recalculate. So if you have that inner critic, it's like, you're not though, really, you're not Lisa, you're not really creative. Um, we're going to do some recalculation. Also, you don't have to be creative in everything, you know? And so we'll walk through that too. Like for me, I'm not, I'm not the best singer, but I still sing. And so I will definitely not be doing karaoke, but I will be there enjoying other people. Um, and I will sing along with folks too. And so I just wanna give people permission to be creatively badly too. So here's some cool definitions from you for, uh, for some framework. So these are by the researchers, Mark Runko and Garrett Yeager. And their brief research definition of creativity is that it's original and effective. And basically folks, what this means is that it doesn't have to be original, like you came up with it, you created it in your kitchen and no one's ever done it before, but it's just original to you. And then the effective piece, like, oh, is that useful? Um, I think the other thing to kind of keep a, a mind, um, attention to is anytime you have an aha moment that's something that's like feeling original to you you're literally making a new connection with your your um, neurons neural pathways like an aha moment because maybe you're problem solving something too so let me take you through um let me take you through two examples i'm going to start with a semester at sea example uh because that's where we're speaking to but uh this is this is an example of a photo i took on my fall 17 voyage with Google Translate. So the students on the voyage, I can't remember exactly who it was, but we were sitting around having one of those amazing meals on, um, on the deck and getting ready to travel. And someone shared, do you know that Google Translate does images? And I just had like, a, like poof, like that original, of like, whoa, mind blowing. If you can hold your camera up on Google Translate and it will read 
the letters, the words in any image that you do it and in and, and a variety of languages. So I just had no idea that this, um, this was a thing. And so um, I went on a trip with some friends, but I was spending the night solo. And here I am in a hotel room in Hongshou and outside of uh, Shanghai, a little city of 4 million. And I remembered this tip because I didn't know if this was $5 bottled water or what it was. So I used this, you know, this app and it indeed was um, a free gift drink. So to me, it was totally a sense of wonder. Like I had a sense of accomplishment. And I also want to say, I think as a woman traveling solo, this expanded my agency. Here was a tool that helped me be more effective and feel more comfortable in traveling and saying hi to people and kind of getting to stay in a hotel room by myself and just it helped with my sense of um, agency and safety at the same time. Now, this one wasn't perfect. If you can read, I don't know how big your screens are. It's from Farmer Mountain, pr Mountain Prison. So maybe that's not the accurate, but I knew free gift drink was the one that um, was really, really, really needed for me in that moment. And so I just wanted to share that in terms of sometimes we think creativity is, well, I'm not original. You know what? You put that original outfit together and that's a part of it. I want people to lean into that and and, and own how they're being um, original. And I wanted to share another example too, that just when I was thinking about this workshop and I had an aha moment, I had a wonder filled aha moment in terms of being original and also connected. So um, there may be tears in the story. There may, there may, we'll see, we'll see what happens. But what I'm going to do is um, stop share just for a moment and come back into the screen. And this is a moment of wonder that I had, which is I'm a painter. And so I'm always looking at things too, like how might I paint this? And I um, was working on a painting and it was, uh, it's actually the painting behind me right now. I'm gonna tilt the screen up a little bit. And I've been working for a while about making my skies softer. And this other thing had happened, um, a really big thing this year, which is I lost my mom. My mom passed away in June and so when I was uh, packing up her things, I wanted to use all of her things. She had so many cool things and I didn't, I just wanted to give them away or donate them to places that were needed or keep them myself. And so one of the ideas I had um, was my mom was really, she was very fashionable, she was very cute. Um, I feel like I need to say she was also uh, a social worker with Alzheimer's patients and she did research and best practices. So I wanna give her kudos for the body of work and not just say she was cute and wore makeup, but, um, she was she cute. Did. She was cute. Right? <laughs> she was cute. Super stylish. <laughs> and uh, Susie. And so I don't wear a lot of makeup, but she had all these gorgeous makeup brushes. And so I had an aha moment back then, which was, I'm going to keep these makeup brushes. And the aha moment back then was, I'm going to use them to paint. And the aha moment that happened this week was, oh my gosh, this is what I need to paint a really soft sky. And so to me, this is so, it's so wonder filled because my mom's with me as I create something beautiful. She had her spirits in that painting. And it was just from having that sense of being open to connection and open to creating and um, open to, it took me time to make this connection and then cry about it and paint some more. And it was beautiful. Like as soon as I started painting it, that the effect came through and just felt her there with me. So. I just wanted to share that because I think that when we do slow down to honor people and make connections, it enriches our lives in so many ways. And so this was a really concrete example of it, how it enriched my life creatively, but um, it didn't even need to be creative. It was just a, a beautiful moment of connection. So there may be tears. Okay, so original and effective. And um, also just the power of connection that comes through when we slow down to use these frameworks. Thank you for adding that. My mom was cute. She was. <laughs> okay. I've got like four more slides about creativity just to get you really dialed in in, in your creativity. Because what I want to just do sometimes is wave a magic wand and just be like, you're all wildly creative. And sometimes that works. I've had some in workshops, I've done that. And people are like, well, it was really helpful. I liked that. But for other folks, they're still a little skeptical. So I just want to lean into a couple more frameworks that might help you breathe into it. So. Another uh, framework, Kaufman and Baghetto, 4C model of creativity. Um, before you even jump into this, Mila, how, what are some ways you think you're creative? You know oh. you're creative. 
Well, certainly with words, I think that just my ability to kind of interpret how people are feeling. I'm curious about how people are feeling. And I think that curiosity is really important. And so when you think about approaching uh, anything from that space of curiosity, you pay more attention, you're more observant. So with words and creating characters and stories, definitely. And it serves me well in my work environment because, you know, at work, a lot of times we get approached with problems. And I think using creativity, coming to a space with this notion of curiosity, this is how we've traditionally done it. This is the problem we're facing. How do we solve that problem? And so coming into a space with questions, asking questions, not walking in the door with your said solutions, I think is very helpful. So um, I think coming into spaces with curiosity is helpful. So in, in work settings and in writing, certainly creative. And then uh, you can attest to this in the kitchen. Oh yeah. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I like food and I like putting flavors together. And so I just make up all kinds of things. And sometimes it's a hit and sometimes it's not, but it's fun either way. I'm not going to give away any of your secret recipes, but Myla and I used to live in the same town together. And when she'd make this one amazing <laughs> stew dish, she'd be like, I have some. And I'm like, I'm coming over in it. Yeah, just that. It's true. Yeah, it's good stuff. So what I, I love, thank you for sharing, Myla, because what I'd love for folks to do is I walk you through the model. Think about which parts of what Myla shared, where they might fit. Um. So the first one though, is what we often think about um, when we think creativity. This is why sometimes we cut ourselves off from this category and that's big C. And this is genius creativity. And so we will look at folks like Maya Angelou and Still I Rise and that woman's life and her writing and be like, oh my gosh, like we're comparing ourselves to genius or Van Gogh, like I can't write like Maya. I can't paint like Van. Um, or Lisa. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> I might be pro C, but I don't know that I'm big C and yet I'm just going to stay, I'm going to stay humble, but I'm going to also dream. Also, I played with this, um, this starry night. I added the Odyssey in for it just for you all too. So uh, we're not Einstein. We didn't come up with a theory of relativity. And so part of creativity too, isn't just what we think about maybe in traditional arts and music, but problem solving, like Mila had said too, or like uh, Mozart, that's the opening notes of Figaro. So we can think of so many great um, genius big C's and that's phenomenally enrich our lives. But sometimes what I think happens is, is we compare um, and then we, we take ourselves out of the equation. Like, oh, you know, Lisa does not equal creative because I didn't come up with any of these big ideas. So I wanna do is share you the other kind of definitions so you can see yourself in these too. Um, the next definition of creativity or next stage that's a possibility that many people might live in is professional creativity a pro C. So if you're a professional baker and you can, you know, I know there's so many great Pinterest fails where we tried and like kudos to all the people that try, that's super creative. Um, and this might be a little bit more playful where we learn from the professionals. We might take a photography tip and try it, but there are folks out there who are doing their whole careers and their work um, and their passion around being professional too. So sometimes this might not work for us too if we're comparing ourselves to professional chefs or cake makers or professional national gorgeous picture magazine photographs. Um, again, that might be where we separate ourselves from thinking that we're creative. And I just wanna say, these people have probably done the Malcolm Gladwell thing of spending at least 10,000 hours on their craft so far. And so the comparison here might not, or the critic, the inner critic in here might not work. Um, you know, and I, I just want to give a shout out to Sammy Lamb. He's got one of his, uh, a wine tasting. He opened a, a wanderlust um, place and it's, it's become a wine sommelier. So I just want to say, you know, some of us are really good at creatively pairing wine with a good meal, but we might not be wine makers or we might not have opened a place that does this as well. So I just want to give you like, say, kind of loosen up our definition of what we think of when we think of um, creativity. I want to say hi to Sammy too. He sailed on fall 2011 with me too. <laughs> oh, super cool. Super cool. DJ and winemaker, <laughs> Sammy. Um, so I want to kind of get us to where we are, where we're creative. And we're creative with what's called uh, little C or everyday C. And this is where you're problem solving. Like, how do you get from X to Y? If you're driving and there's traffic and you're like, hmm, I want to go a different route. 
because I don't want to sit in traffic or I want to pull over and hang out at the park. You are being creative. You're problem solving. And this is extremely creative. If you've ever put together a presentation for work, a mini speech, that is creative. If you've ever thrown a party, you are being creative. What's on the menu? Who comes? Are there decorations? Do people dress up? Um, you, you get, this is all creative. And you're actually also creating experiences for people. You're creating, you're literally anyone who's host, you're creating experiences for your guests to connect. And then it doesn't have to just be things that are wonderful. Slowing down and meeting somebody new is wonderful. Like there's a world of wonder in, in Myla and me and our friendship when we get together. And so even just like slowing down again, that mindfulness piece. So here's just a couple of examples, like everyday little C, like a new recipe, like maybe making cardamom cotton candy or for anyone who's rocking really cool socks right now, drop it into the, into the comments, what kind of cool socks you are wearing. Um, I've drawn one with a little, a little nautical theme. Um, if you've ever fixed anything, if you've ever hung, hung a painting, uh, it's, you know, hammer tools, you're, that's making something, or maybe you're mending, you know, maybe you're mending something. I know we're all being more conscious globally of like fast fashion and slowing down and reusing things. So if you've ever mended anything, uh, you are being creative. And so that's where the needle is too. There's a couple little hidden Easter egg jokes in here. If you're from the eighties, you will know that it's hammer time. Um, okay, good point, Lisa. So the last one totally connects to semester at C. And this one's called mini C. And it, it's very basic. It's just about learning. That literally when we learn something, we create new neural pathways. And I think that's one of the reasons why um, we like learning. And if you went on semester C, we know you love learning. And we know the semester C is, I, I feel like I have lifelong lessons from each voyage. Um, and that's true, I think, of anywhere I travel. And you'd also don't need to travel to have this sense of wonder or sense of learning. It's just about, again, coming and circling back around to I spy with my little eye about keeping track of what's wonderful. One of the things I loved about um, the host port activities, sometimes people call them open mic or, um, or sharing. And I just, this is where so much wonder came in when I didn't get to go do everything that everyone else did, but I got to hear their stories and just the beauty in, um, in their stories. And I'm just gonna tell a quick one minute story about um, on my spring 98 trip. One of the, um, one of the moments of wonder that uh, came to my eyes was from a woman who was a faculty member. She was, um, I wish I could remember her name, but we had been traveling in China and she told a story about being in Tiananmen Square and meeting an older Chinese woman who was flying a kite. And this is pre Google Translate. And um, this woman, I think her name was Betsy. She couldn't speak Mandarin or Cantonese. And this Chinese woman couldn't speak English, but um, Betsy slowed down to watch the kite flying and just joy, smile, joyful smile. And the Chinese woman smiled back and they like, they spoke the language of connection and wonder. And when the kite came down, the Chinese woman wrapped it up and handed it to Betsy and said, I want, in broken English, uh, my gift to you. Like, and, and just touched her heart and like put her hand kind of over where Betsy's heart was and was like, because she knew that they had just shared this moment of connection and wonder and awe together. And so one of the questions I'd like to put out to you all um, in chat too is, is to maybe reflect upon a quiet moment of wonder you had on your voyage. We all know we get asked that question whenever we come back from a trip and particularly a semester, see what was your favorite country? Like there's this superlative, like what was the best? And uh, sometimes, you know, it's not about skydiving or shark diving. Um, it's about those quiet moments of wonder, even though those other things are pretty great too. That's my mini lecture. The one piece I'd wanna say um, is just a reminder, if you're feeling like, okay, I'm getting, I'm getting ready to be creative and feel creative, but I still have this critic, put them in the back seat and put curiosity in the front seat. That's from Elizabeth Gilbert in the book, The Magic. And the curiosity again, wonder is a verb, being, uh, having, you know, I wonder about something. Uh, yeah, you might not be convinced. So the other thing I'd like to do to have people prepared, really think about how powerful they are in being creative is this sense of, um, I'd like you to do is reflect upon a gift that you either made or received um, that was made for you. And this could be like a party too, or it could be that somebody made you a card or made you a poem. 
and just drop that into um, into the comments. And I'd like to slow down and ask uh, Myla if she would share a gift that was either made for her or she made for somebody else. Yeah, a gift. So one that comes to mind, I've been given a lot of great gifts. I have a great circle of, of friends and family, but one that comes to mind is I had taken a, one of my friends came to visit me when I was living in Santa Barbara and we took a million pictures like we always do. And a few weeks later, I got a photo book in the mail with all of our pictures and some quotes, things we said and laughed about, pictures of places we visited. And I just thought it was the most beautiful gift because it reminded me of our time together. And so that, that, that one comes to mind. It's just somebody taking the time to reflect. And it also showed me that what I thought was special about our time together was what she thought was special about our time together too. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Folks, I ask this question in a lot of workshops I do on this topic because I think it grounds us into how much we mean to other people and how much people mean to us. And I think there's a world of wonder in that. And there's also a lot of, um, I think, empowerment and agency in that too, as well. Uh, I'm thinking too, uh, one of the things that sparked for me doing this activity with folks was that um, my grandfather gave my grandmother a ring that he made out of horse hair. He, wore, he got a strand of horse hair and he wove it and part of a toothbrush that had stripes on it, it was blue and green. And so the toothbrush piece of plastic was kind of the gem and then he wove this horse hair ring and he made it for her when he was um, a prisoner of war in World War II. Uh, he was in the Scottish army and got captured landing nearby um, in France during D-Day, but not the actual D-Day and was kept prisoner of war for three years and limited, um, limited writing and exchanging, but he got to make a gift in the middle of camp and get it to my grandmother. And um, I just think about like of all that, she used to show me all her cool jewelry when I was a kid and just be like, someday, you know, this will be yours. And, but what I really wanted was that ring. I mean, that to me, just spoke, I think of the power of love and the power of creativity and is imbued with a sense of awe. And I share that because I just know whenever I do this activity with people and we get to hear some of the stories of things that you created, we spark off of that. Like Myla, your description of what your friend did um, is beautiful. And I was like, what a great idea. Like, I, I think I should do that on my next adventure with friends. What a beautiful idea. Thank you for sharing. And then it kind of brings up that kind of learned hopefulness for us that learned helpfulness like oh this sense of I can I will step into doing something slightly different or new um, and make it fun or meaningful and just that sense of that so wherever I do um, this activity I think people do get a sense of maybe connecting more to their creativity beyond when I'm just saying hey everybody you're creative um, gosh I was going to add one more thing about this too and the gift and the takeaway for that Oh, it'll come back to me later. <laughs> Not right now, though. <laughs> Take away for the gift. Oh, it'll come back to me later. Okay. So the other piece to um, all this is just that we all have sparks. And I, I know that one of the powerful things is, is to be in community with other people. That's also uh, and how we spark off of each other. I think that's one of the things that people speak a lot about with Semester at Sea. Um, but I think just being intentional with, um, with our connections to folks too will bring a sense of wonder into things. Okay, I'm going to end the formal slideshow theory part and move into uh, just conversation. conversation. Yeah. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing all of that. Um, part of wonder we've talked about is creativity. So I would like to know how Semester at Sea and experiencing that has impacted your creativity. Oh my gosh. Uh, I would say first off, just through imagination. And I wanna say that the first time I found out I was going on Semester at Sea, the voyage started as soon as I found out I was going. And I just was like, oh my gosh, I'm going. How much shampoo do I need? So I would date my shampoo and like do a study on like, okay, this is how much it is for three months. But I was also be like, what do I need for this trip? And like everyone, you know, there's so many great notes out there about what to pack and what to bring. 
um, including about connecting with other people, bring small gifts for folks um, in the different countries. And I used to make beads out of Sculpey. And so I brought a bag of beads and a bag of uh, string and I would make necklaces for kids in different countries and try to make sure they didn't eat it because they look like candy. So it just sparked, like, I don't even, I should write a book on that because I don't even know necessarily what else to say, but I will say that uh, my creativity was sparked too with the beginning of every journey. I love to be on the bow of the ship because it's like the adventure is beginning. It's almost like we've read the prelude and then we're turning to the first page and, and feeling the wind in my hair um, is just really with everyone, like being in community with everyone who's just wants to be in a living and learning connected community. Um, to me, that's been like a peak experience. And then creatively too, it's been also, I like to create, I like to collect um, things like interesting physical things from around the world. Like here's a curious thing. This is about being, sorry, you asked about creativity, but I'm moving into curiosity for briefly. Um, I just like to collect cool natural shapes like this. What do you think this is folks? Drop your guesses into the comments. It is not a coconut shell. Many of you who know me know I love fresh coconut milk, but I'm gonna give folks to guess what this might be. You probably already know for some folks that have been to, here's a hint, Brazil. Uh, this is the shell, the outer shell for Brazil nuts, which kind of all nestle in here, almost like orange slices, but the Brazil nuts, you know, their shape. So this is a, a nice cool little bowl, but it's, you know, it grows this way. And so for me, creative creativity in Semester at Sea is about um, just keeping my eyes open. And I also encourage people to collect those curious questions. So the framework, the so last voyage I went on, I was like, you know what, I want to talk to an artist and in every country I go to, I wanna to connect with them. And I got to do that. Uh, I got to meet Sophie who has a booth in uh, Cape Town uh, and she makes repurposed bottle cap bracelets. She was amazing. And I also got to meet um, a painter, a fishman at Nobina who is, he's shown in galleries around the world. And I got to go to his gallery in Ghana and I got to see his studio cause we had a friend of a friend and. Um, his paintings hanging up in another room. But I remember just being in awe of him and his paintings. And he said to me in 2017, he was like, you're a painter. Yeah, and I showed him a couple of mine. And he was like, uh, and I said, I'd like to do this like you're doing it. And he's like, full time someday? And I said, yeah. And he said, great, by when? And I said, five years. And I'm pretty close, I'm getting there. And so um, he just embarked me in that sense of wonder, like, I wonder if I can do this and just leaning into that. Um, so that's some of the ways that, that creativity has connected. Oh, I did a creativity workshop on my last voyage too that imbued some of the questions. And right when I was getting ready to go into Last Finger Union, Union and uh, I was getting ready to present, there were two students. It was Anthony, I can't remember can't remember, it might have been um, Unar. Anyways, they were just jamming out, you know, like you find a, a part of the floor <laughs> just to jam. And I said, hey, will you, would you guys start my workshop? Can you just go on stage and kind of be like the intro to the workshop on creativity? Because I went into this workshop and they're literally being creative outside of it. So I think that's the other thing too, is thinking about, it's almost like an improv, like how to say yes to people and things and keep your eyes open for those cool connections. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. How about you? Can you speak a little bit about the voyages you've been on and your creativity and your journey in terms of writing or anything? Else? Yeah, I think for me, it was about giving myself the space to just be. And so sitting on the back of the ship, you like to sit on the front. I love sitting on the back of the ship and just seeing the water and the sun dancing off of it with a journal and just writing. And, and I think when we get caught up in our day-to-day -day lives, we don't allow ourselves to just sit in, in the silence. We come home, we watch television or, you know, we just, we, we fill it with activity. We don't give ourselves time to just sit and listen. And um, Semester SE gave me the space to just sit and listen and experience and practice gratitude with a journal every day. And it was, it was great. And so I think one of the lessons that it taught me was how to listen, how to actively listen. I love it. You were a fantastic listener. 
And thank you even just talking about you slowing down and watching the sun sparkle on the waves um, and write uh, helped me ground too. I think that's, that things can go by so fast. And so, yeah, I think there's so many things out there that um, we live in an attention economy and everybody wants our attention and our mm -hmm. eyeballs to be on something. And so this is something that I like to do is like, how can we encourage each other to build these habits of wonder or curiosity so that, that we can keep out some of the commercials of like, hey, you're not enough, you need to buy something or don't you want this over here? Uh, like, oh, you need to have this experience. You know, actually what I just need to do is be present with my thoughts for a moment. Um, right. Me. So uh, the other thing that I would encourage people to do is if anything has sparked you um, insofar as what Milo and I have been talking about is to go ahead and write it on a post-it or if you're feeling really bold, get a blank piece of paper and write it fancy. Write down a word that will spark for you remembering how you want to live and to wonder in your own life. So I know we're, we're running out of time here and you know, you do full blown workshops on creativity, living with intention, spark and corporate and organizational settings. You also coach, you cartoon. What is next for you? Oh. <sighs> I, um, there's, so what's next for me is still shaping sort of, um, a life that's not, not necessarily in the, um, eight to five arena so that I can have some more of those times of, um, deep thinking and sense of wonder. Also, um, I did have a great, great time in higher ed for many, many years, uh, but to be free of just sort of this like clock and I, um, I know the song back in the 70s, Dolly, um, you know, it used to be nine to five and then it became eight to five. I'm like, wait a minute, can we go back to the nine to five? Like nine to five, what a, what a way to make your living. Um, and so I just feel like, you know, what's happening now too, if you look around and you see like the great resignation and people are just wondering like, gosh, what's, what's going on for folks? They're actually studying what's happening for people. I think what's happening for a lot of us right now is um, a sense of recalculating about what's really important and meaningful. And so for me, I did, I launched away from um, my work at UCSP where I had a great, they let me sail on semester C four times, shout out, shout out to, um, to my former bosses there, uh, Jill Hurd and Willie Brown are two people that just let me go on this voyage and come back, it kept me fresh. Um, but what's next for me right now is just leaning into, um, Gosh, I read in one of the articles I was looking up in terms of wonder, and I, I'm sorry I can't attribute this yet, um, but the, someone said that wonder is the gateway to wisdom. And so for me, what's next is leaning into doing, uh, I do some workshops for companies right now that's going great. And I still do some strategic planning for nonprofits and companies, but I'm also taking time to, to do my art, um, to work on the cartooning and to connect with people. Um, I'm hoping to see Milo this weekend. I'm going to drive down to Long Beach, but just that's what's next for me. And I'm, what's percolating is actually writing. Like I'd like to write some of this into books. I have some kids books that um, I have one kids book that I'm, I'm going to say it right now. I'm going to do the creative tension with you all. I have one kids book that I want to um, launch by March and get into the world. I think it, the world would, um, would really enjoy this book and, so I'd like to live into that a little bit more. And I wonder what writing a book about wonder would look like too. Sorry, friend, you're on mute. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing iterations of the children's book in March. Uh, so before we, before we go, uh, there are three things that, that I need to share with everyone before we go. So Semester at Sea alums, Founders Day is this Friday. And Semester SC is celebrating 58 years, which is amazing. So please check out the link in the comments for more information on local events, including an auction. So 58 years, Founders Day this Friday. Um, also, as you consider giving back to causes that you care about, remember that Semester SC is a 5013C uh, nonprofit organization and is certainly in need of your support now more than ever. Know that gifts of any size make a difference. So please consider giving students the world so that they can have conversations like Lisa and I have just shared with you. 
And then if you or someone you know has an amazing or interesting story to share about how Semester SE influenced their life or career path, um, we're looking for stories. We're always looking for alums to feature. So email wavelinks, that's wavelinks at semester at c.org uh, to be considered for a future series. So Lisa, thank you so much for your insight and for so graciously sharing your perspective with everyone. Uh, to all of you who are here with us virtually, I appreciate you taking the time to listen in and participate. I hope that something you heard today resonates with you and leads you to be more intentional about living a life of wonder. Lisa, is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, just thanks for joining us today. And just the journey continues and just here's, um, here's to having a wonder-filled life. Be well, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, folks. <laughs>